So I'm a TQA and pre-treatment QA is very essential for a medical physicist. It's imperative that you not only know what to do, but you know what you do in your clinic. So let's say you have the image to the right. What is this device and how is it used? How do you perform patient-specific QA? What is your acceptance criteria? Your QA shows a 10% discrepancy. The patient treats in one hour. What is your next step and what could cause this discrepancy? So right here, we have a map check. So it contains diodes, approximately 1,500 of them. And there is a limited field size, depending on what model you're using. It could be a 26 by 32. We also have a matrix that has ion chambers. There's also an arc check, which is similar to a map check, but it has 1,400 detectors and it deals with laterality better. And it's actually like a, a map check that is rolled into a cylinder. That way it's ideal for IMR TQAs and BMAT, things of that nature. So how do you perform patient-specific QA? Now, this is obviously a department specific question. So you'll have to answer, but you should absolutely know and be able to verbalize it with complete confidence and clarity. So before you treat the actual patient plan, you want to do a dose calc on a CT of whatever phantom you're using. Now, some people use portal dosimetry, some use this map check. Let's say we're going to use a map check. So beforehand, you want to scan this in CT, import it in your treatment planning system, and then you want to take the patient plan as is and pretend as though it is treating this map check. That way we have what the dose planes and the dose distribution should look like on the map check. We are then going to go to the machine, actually shoot that plan on this very device, exactly how it's set up in the treatment planning system, and verify that the actual measured dose plane that we receive looks like what it should and what it was estimated to look like in the treatment planning system. And we are going to use an acceptance criteria. We're going to use gamma analysis. So that uses the distance to agreement and dose difference. What we want are 95% of our points meeting the criteria of ideally 2% and two millimeters. And so that can of course be increased. Uh, look at TG119 for IMR TQA and commissioning, but that's actually a pretty good uh, TG119. Also TG120 gives you a little bit more about gamma analysis. That's both of those are for IMRT task groups. So dive a little further and knows know what gamma criteria is. It's not the point of this question, but definitely you need to know. So now what happens if your QA is off and the patient is coming soon? So first thing you want to do is verify the setup. It's very easy to mess up on the SSD. Maybe you don't put it at 100. Maybe as you're walking out, the cord got kicked and the map check isn't perfectly centered anymore. Maybe there was a shift outside on the treatment machine. Anything could happen. A simple setup error could cause a failure. Then you want to ensure that you are looking at the correct dose plane. So maybe the dose plane you exported into the software was the sagittal plane rather than the coronal plane. You also want to look at the modulation. Look at the plane itself. Is there a lot of modulation? How many MUs are being delivered laterally? All those are very important because if you're using a map check here, it doesn't deal with laterality very well. So if you are pumping a ton of MUs laterally, well, that could explain why you may not have ideal results. Also look at the field size. Does it fit within the diode array? You can also just rerun it. And the last step, and something you always want to do is tell the physician, hey, we ran this IMR TQA. It's, uh, it, it passes at 5%, 5 millimeter. That's higher than we normally do at 2%, 2 millimeter. Are you okay with that for today until we die further? Or would you rather push the patient back? You always want the physician's approval if anything is a little, little off. And then you want to document that as well. So the test in part three is verifying that you are safe and you're a clinically viable physicist. So they're going to ask you questions of, well, what if it doesn't go according to plan? What are you going to do? What are your backup plans? And that is very important to know, especially for this topic. So if you have any questions, comment below. Thanks for watching and happy studying.